I've decided it's time for me to be a little more proactive about scheduling and managing my classes. I'm going to start doing regular classes and accepting multiple students and I'll be announcing those here and online. The next class that I'll be doing here in my studio will be a three-day inlay and overlay class. That class will be held October 6th through 8th and I'm accepting six students. My class starts on a Monday and the weekend before that class is the Boot and Saddle Makers Roundup in Wichita Falls, Texas. The weekend after my class is the Chisholm Trail Leather Guild Show in Oklahoma City. So there's potential to go to some other shows while you're here in Oklahoma attending a class. It's going to be a three day inlay and overlay class, Monday through Wednesday. I'll stay open on Thursday morning to allow students to finish up any final bits on their project and pack up and then Thursday afternoon I'll have to start getting ready because I'm going to have a booth at the Oklahoma City Leather Guild Show. Again, the class is October 6th through 8th at my studio here in Guthrie, Oklahoma. It will be a three-day leather inlay and overlay class and the cost will be $950. Give me a call or send me an email if you want to reserve your space in the class. I'm only taking six students. No, I just started the video camera. Oh, can I still tell you my story? Sure. As I was Would you driving, like to get in camera range? As I was driving home, I saw one of my good friends who graduated a while ago, and he had the window rolled down, and he yelled out, Pretty girl! At me. How lovely. Which I am. And he's a very pretty boy. Okay, that was Paige. All right, any of you that know me know that alligator leather is my absolute favorite leather. It's beautiful, it's lovely to work with, there's just no downside to alligator. I use alligator every chance I get. I make my show boots with alligator, I make boots for my husband with alligator, and I wear it too. All right, so what we have here is a full alligator skin. This skin is a belly cut, which means this is where the backbone was on either side, and this is the belly. As you can see, the small tiles are on the outside of the skin, and those are the ones we want to use as much as possible. This is a vamp pattern, and for a skin this size, I like to try to get two vamps and two counter covers. Alligator skin is sold by the centimeter rather than the foot, and it's measured across the widest part of the belly. This one is 57 centimeters across, and I prefer to buy skins that are in the 52 to 57 centimeter range. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one vamp right down there, right in here we've got some nice small tiles. Here you want the small scales in the toe area because that'll make it easier to wipe in the toe. I'm gonna to position that vamp just like this and trace around it. And that will give me a vamp that has small scales down one side and around the toe and then an area of larger scales here. The second vamp will be positioned in a mirror image. This one is slanting this way. That one slants that way. What that's going to leave us, when the boot is finished, there's going to be small tiles running along the outside of the foot and larger ones on the inside on both boots because they're mirror images. Each of them will have small scales on the outside, larger scales on the inside. Now with a skin this size, we'll have room to put one more set of vamps right up there like that. That's going to use up all of the really nice small tiles. And now we still need the counter covers. So we can stick one counter cover right in there. And what we're going to end up with 
is a counter cover that has smaller scales on the one side of it and larger scales on the other side. That's great because then when we make the boot, we'll line it up at the side seams to where the small scales are meeting at the side seam and on the other side of the boot, you'll have large scales meeting at the side seam. Last spring, I had a student in my shop who was an engineer. One of the things that we talked about in his class was the old tools and how beautiful they are and how hard they can be to find. He decided he was going to go home and copy one of my favorite tools ever, my shank pullers. These are an old pair of A.M. Christensen shank pullers and they're absolutely beautiful. They were in perfect shape when I got them and I've tried to care for them and keep them in perfect shape. He loved them too and I trusted him enough to loan him my shank pullers so that he could reproduce them. And I am so happy to say that he's done a great job. He's making beautiful little shank pullers that are modeled off of my AM Christensen's. One of the things that he's really interested in is the beauty of the handle. And so he's doing handles that are all different kinds of wood. The head is beautiful. The teeth are sharp. I'm so happy to say that there are now shank pullers available and they're made by one of my students, Tom Carbone. If you order a pair of these, there's a little story that goes with each one that tells about how he came to my shop and was inspired to make these. The shank pullers are available on my website, lisasorel.com. Click on the Sorel Notions and Findings link and then on the link that says Tools and Knives.